sure. I don't know if you can see the detail on the molding, or excuse me, the picture frame. Look at that, almost like an egg and dart. Super cool, and it's already a gray distressed finish. So I'm not sure that I'm gonna do a whole lot with the frame. This one, I have not taken apart. The other one, obviously, I didn't, it fell apart. So I'm gonna first use my screwdriver and my pliers to pull out the staples on the back. At one point, these were probably pretty expensive. These were custom framed. I can tell they were custom framed because number one, this little sawtooth hanger, the way that it's put in here. And number two, typically speaking, if you buy something off the rack, it doesn't have this craft paper on the back of it, and it certainly isn't stapled on like this. So I would venture to guess at one point somebody paid quite a bit of money for these. So I'm gonna take this craft paper off because I want to expose the back of the picture. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more you can get off of the back of the frame, the less you will have to deal with later. So let me clear this all back. Another way I know that this is a custom framed piece is the way that the picture is actually put in the frame itself because if it was um, an off the rack assembly line kind of picture, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard to see, but see how it's tacked individually all the way around the piece. If it had been an off the rack piece, it might have a couple of staples in it, but other than that, you wouldn't be able to to see the quality of the craftsmanship in the framing. So I'm going to get underneath of these staples with my screwdriver and hopefully it will not break this piece of glass. The other piece of glass broke when I was doing this because of the pressure I had to apply to get these staples out of here. And I truly have no idea how whoever framed this got the staples in at an angle. Kind of clever, actually. And I'd love to know, because I would like to duplicate the practice for some of the stuff that I do. And some of them are a little stubborn. So I'm gonna go to the ones that are easy first, and then I'll come back to the ones that are being stubborn. I'm using an old pair of pliers with some really good gripping teeth and screwdriver. And I'm just getting underneath of the staples. This is how y'all can take apart any kind of a picture. Um, Goodwill had a ton of them. I found myself having to have some self-control, which is very difficult for me because there were so many great pictures. Um, let me rephrase that. So many great picture frames that I had a whole buggy full of them and then I knew better than to come home with a whole buggy full of picture frames because I knew Big Daddy would crucify me if I came home with 825 picture frames. Well, nasty, ugly pictures and beautiful picture frames. And I had no idea what I was going to do with any of them. This one I would actually like if the frame stays together. I'd like to turn this into a chalkboard. Wouldn't that be cute? With this rustic... Um, distressed kind of gray finish frame. I'd love to turn this into a chalkboard for somebody to be able to hang on their kitchen wall or put in an easel and write what the menu is for the day. Um, write a great Bible verse. Write an encouraging saying to the family. Write a grocery list. Do whatever they would like to do with it. And yeah, you can see these are kind of stubborn, right? I wanted to go live tonight and show you that things really aren't as easy as some Instagram stories and um, HGTV shows. 
make them look like they are. Sometimes things are kind of difficult and you run into challenges and unexpected problems, thus the frame that totally fell apart. And it, one minute it was all together and the next minute it was in four pieces. And that was after I had filled all of the corners because I thought it was gonna survive. So I'm just going around and pulling every one of these staples out with my handy dandy pliers. It's not a needle nose pliers either. A needle nose wouldn't have enough, pardon the pun, teeth to be able to grab the staples. It's too narrow of a point. Oh goodness, that one's really in there. Let me see if I can get this one out. There we go. on this one because I would love to then be able to recycle the glass on another picture and do something else with it. I also save the actual picture itself from this frame because it's not a bad picture. Just really did not go with this style of frame. So I would, I'm also going to be on the lookout during my um, thrift store hunts to find some frames for these two prints because they'd actually go really well in my house. Just a couple more here to do. Ooh, that one's stubborn. And if you are a beginner at DIY and you really don't know how to do this stuff, please notice that I am digging in these staples away from me so that if the screwdriver slips, it doesn't slip and hit me. I'm digging under these staples. It's actually taking a lot of muscle and a lot of pressure to pull them out. Again, how I know this was a custom framed piece and not something off the rack, last one. But I'm um, moving away from me all the time. Y'all see that? And if I need to go the opposite direction, I still turn it away from me. So that I don't stab myself with a screwdriver. That would kind of be a sucky emergency room visit and that would be embarrassing for me to have to explain to the ER people that I stabbed myself with a screwdriver. So there we go, this one remained intact. Woohoo! Here's the picture. Not a bad picture. Um, kind of rustic and kind of sepia tones. So I will recycle it some way, way somehow. I'm gonna put it over there on my container. And then I've got a piece of glass. And then all I'm gonna do for this one is, can you see, I'm trying to get in the corner. Can you see in the corners? Yeah, you can see it right there how we've got some gap. Can you see that right there? Yeah, you can see it there. We got some gap in these corners, which again, is a little bit surprising for a custom frame piece. But I am going to grab my wood filler and we'll fill in the corners. I'll show you how to do that quick. So I'll be right back. Going over to my tool bag to grab my wood filler. Okay, some people use their hands. This is the wood filler that I'm gonna use. It is a neutral color, it's a natural color. So it's really light. Some people, um, when they apply wood filler, they use their fingers. Actually, I don't really like to do that. I have weird reactions to different things and I like to just make sure that I'm not touching this stuff because I never know what's gonna irritate my skin and what's not. And this stuff can be kind of wicked. It's not working like this, see y'all? Lives are not always perfect. It's not working like this, so let me grab a pair of gloves and then I can use my fingers. Let me get in this container. Grab me a pair of 
gloves. These gloves are also from Home Depot. They are the, um, let me grab my package. Heavy duty disposable nitrate gloves. I know again, it's backwards, my apologies. But they're the heavy duty disposable nitrate gloves so that I can use just about any type of product with them and they will not spontaneously combust or disintegrate from anything. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of wood filler and fill it in each one of these corners. Cause I'm actually gonna paint this frame a different color. I don't know what color yet because I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. And I want to get the wood filler out of the corners, or excuse me, out of the detail of the piece so that when I go to paint it, I don't have a big funky glob of something in the corner. Does that make sense? Can y'all see what I'm doing? So this one went much better than the first one. Big Daddy's gonna actually have to help me with that one. We're gonna have to miter the corners on the other one and nail them back together and basically reconstruct the whole entire frame. But it'll be fabulous when it's done. No, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that one either. Hey baby, hey daddy. You off the grill for a while? Y'all, I forgot to tell you I was on my own again tonight because Big Daddy's on the grill for me again. He is making me some homemade beef jerky tonight. And it is just as fabulous as it sounds like it is. He got some thin cuts of meat today. Don't ask me what kind because y'all know I don't cook. And he's been manning the grill for a ton of it. Gosh, the last... What, baby? Three hours, two hours, three hours? Um, waiting for that jerky to become jerky. Okay, so now, can you see? I'm gonna try and get really close up. See in the corner, you can see the tan wood filler. You can no longer see that there's a big, huge space, a big, huge gap in the frame. So I filled in those gaps with the wood filler. And we're gonna set it aside and we're gonna let it dry. Then tomorrow I'll sand it and paint it and I will post a picture of what it looks like when it is all done. So again, this, I do think I want to um, make a chalkboard, put a chalkboard in here and then enclose the back of it again. This would be really cute at our shows. Somebody would really love this. They would eat it up because it's got so much character and it would definitely be one of a kind. So I'm gonna put this over here on the workbench and let it dry. I'm gonna leave my gloves on. The last project I wanted to bring y'all in and show you is if you remember from the picture that I posted yesterday, there was a big mirror around and it had a silver frame around it. This is that frame. I have spray painted it a matte brown and I don't know if this is gonna work y'all because that frame I thought was a wood finish. It was actually like a funky 1980s silver wood foil. It was really kind of gross when I brought it home and looked at it. So what I want to do with this is I want to distress it. It's too pretty and it's too even. So I'm just taking some 400 grit sandpaper, which actually I think I need a little bit more tooth to my sandpaper. I'm just taking a 400 grit sandpaper and I'm running it over the edges. The edges have kind of a, a slope to them. Got a little bit of a routed edge. So I'm just taking the sandpaper. Let me grab some 
different sandpaper over here. Uh, let me grab some 150. Okay, I grabbed some 150 grit sandpaper. Oh, that's much better. See how much easier that works, y'all? Did y'all see that? Now I'm getting somewhere super quick. So I'm really just going back over this frame that I spray painted. What did I spray paint it with? Great question. I spray painted it with this Rust-Oleum spray paint. It is a painter and prime paint and primer all in one. And this color is matte bittersweet. So it's a super, super dark brown with a flat matte finish on it. I love, y'all, I'm gonna digress for a second. I love this Rust-Oleum, I know it's backwards. I love this Rust-Oleum brand spray paint. I get mine at Home Depot, I found that is the best price. But this trigger is so much nicer when you're trying to spray paint something than the can with the push down sprayer. You like how I'm doing that with my finger? The push down sprayer. Your finger doesn't get tired. Plus this actually comes out more like um, a paint sprayer, a professional paint sprayer. So you get a much smoother finish. I don't have anywhere near the runs when I use this spray paint as I do when I use regular spray paint. So let me just finish distressing this and sanding this a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys, because that's the point, right? You can see where we're starting to get some, some lines showing and you can see that they're uneven. That's exactly what we want to have happen. And if you notice, I'm putting the sandpaper in different places, in different spots on the frame. So I really want to concentrate on the corners, get some character on the corners. When you're doing this, kind of think about where the natural wear and tear might be. Okay, that chipped, so let's give that some nice distressing. And I'm just going over it randomly and taking some of the paint back off. Because I don't want it to be perfect. And actually this is working much nicer than I thought it would. I was kind of nervous when I saw that this frame was not paint. It was some kind of funky 1980s thermal foil wrap junk. I'm going to look this over. So you can see that it is not perfect. I'll just kind of twist it around for you so you can see it. See some of the character in it? Again, y'all, I apologize. It's kind of dark. And it has been raining and raining and raining and raining here. So there's really no decent lighting to be had because I know some of y'all in the Midwest and up north are getting tons of snow. For as much snow as you guys have had, we have had the equivalent in rain. So the pictures that I promised you last week when we went live, with that would be posted this weekend, will not be posted because I don't have any decent light to take any decent pictures of any of the products that we debuted last week. So I'm going over this frame now, just with the paper towel, because look, can you see the dust that's coming up on it? So I'm just taking the dust off of it, because it's a lot of dust, because again, it was a funky paint. And I'm going to look at the back. You know, I think I might want to run the sandpaper over the back of it too. Especially this edge, just because this edge is going to show. Whoops. And there went my water bottle. And it broke. Okay, let me move it over here. That's a bummer. Let me grab 
grab a paper towel. Throw it on the ground so that water doesn't get everywhere. Good thing I got indoor-outdoor cords, but I don't want the water to get on my bandsaw. There we go. Okay. So I think I'm just going to distress this a little bit because I want the back to match the front. Does that make sense? I don't want the back to be all perfect and not have any distressing and then have the front be all distressed. Then it would look funky. So again, I'm just going in random places. Just kind of taking some of that paint back off. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We don't want it to be perfect, right? We definitely do not want it to be perfect. And I'm drying this off. Just drying it off, wiping it off. You'll know what I meant. So now that I got all the dust off of it, we're good to go for the next step, which will be I won't bore you with it, it will not be very exciting, which will be applying a coat, again, I know it's backwards, of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear um, Enamel. It is a matte sealer, and I use it on all kinds of stuff, especially when I'm doing distressing, and I like things to look worn. Like in this case, it's not worn. It's not old, it's being repurposed, but it's not already distressed barn wood like this is. Isn't this fabulous? I found this at Goodwill yesterday, y'all. It is a barn wood picture frame, handmade. Amazing, right? So it's not distressed and already got character like this. So I get, we gave it some character. We spray painted it flat brown, and then we used four, um, 400 and, what did I say, 150 grit sandpaper? Yep, 150 grit sandpaper to give it some character. And then I'm gonna seal it. Then my next steps will be to cut a board to go along the inside lip of here um, that I'm gonna paint with chalkboard paint and I'm gonna turn this into a chalkboard. Won't that be an awesome chalkboard? A nice big chalkboard to write menus, write sayings, do whatever you want to with. So I will post